Hi, welcome to our next video that talks about blocks. So I think this will be the one video that most people watch. Blocks are very difficult because we just don't see them very often. So anything that we don't do often, it, it's hard for us to be good at it. So this is something that you usually have to refresh your memory on a little bit. I'm going to try to explain it in a way using the conduction pathway um, that hopefully tends to stick a little bit better. All right, so when we go down to blocks, let's go back through our conduction pathway. And if you haven't gotten a chance to watch our getting started video that talks about the conduction pathway and how to measure and where the PRI starts and all of those basic information pieces, make sure to go back and watch that if you need to refresh your memory on that. So if you look at the conduction pathway, we start with our SA node, come down to our AV node, our bundle of HIS, our bundle branches. Okay, and we have this safety net here, our AV junction that lives at the bottom of the AV node and the top of the bundle of HIS. So remember there's a little guy that lives in there, think of the circus, little guy in tights, and he's got a safety net. And so he's the one that helps us know when to let everything through. So he's our safety net there. In the blocks, he really becomes very, very important because he is the one that decides what our rhythm is going to look like and it teaches us what the rhythm is, okay? So let's get started. So our first question that we always ask ourselves is, is there a P wave? And in the blocks, what happens a lot of times is we have extra P waves. Once we have extra P waves, we knock out the other questions because we know that if we have extra P waves, it has to be a block. And then we go into some other questions we're going to ask ourselves. So let's look at the first block that we have. Now with this one, we have um, a P wave. And what happens with this one is we have a delay. So in other words, we have the stimulation coming from the SA node. So we have that nice, pretty, rounded uh, P wave. But the problem is getting through the safety net, it's not blocking the stimulation, it's like it's trying to get through a bowl of oatmeal. So it's going slower than it normally would. So it fires in the SA node, it hits the safety net, and it goes slow, 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 and then lets it through. And so what happens is we end up having a longer PRI. Okay? So it's going to be greater than 0.20. This one is our first degree block. Our first degree block is not truly a block. It actually is more of a delay. Everything else looks pretty. If I had you look at that rhythm, you'd say sinus rhythm. But actually, when we measure, we figure out that there's a first degree block. That's why it's so important to know how to measure correctly, because this is one that gets missed a lot, because people are just glancing at the rhythm seeing that everything looks right and going along their merry way, not realizing that the patient is starting down a pathway that may go to the next blocks. So this is our first degree block. Um, so everything looks the same. Now what happens with the next ones are that the safety net starts to get involved. And so when the safety net gets involved, we just start to see some differences with the rhythms. With the next one, it's letting the stimulation through. So the little guy's like, yep, go ahead, you can go through. Okay. But what's happening is it's like this safety net is getting thicker and thicker. So when we look here, we see we've got P waves. So we're good there, there are P waves. But the problem is, see this little guy here? It doesn't have a QRS behind it. And remember the question is, is there a consistent one for every QRS rounded P wave? So the answer to that question is actually no, because we have an extra P. Now once we decide we have an extra P, we have to look at the relationship between the atrium and the ventricle. And the relationship between the atrium and the ventricle is in the PRI. So if we look at the PRI here, 
and we look at the PRI here, and here, what's happening with the PRI? Well, it's getting longer. It's getting further and further apart. And what happens is, once it gets to a certain point where it's so far away, the ventricle no longer sees it and doesn't fire. So this one is here, delay, delay, it didn't see it, it didn't even have the ventricle fire, and then it picked back up. So this one's longer, longer, longer drop. This one is going to be our second degree type one. Okay, you may have heard it as Winky Bach. Oh, I can never spell Winky Bach. Winky Bach. Check my spelling. <laughs> I think that's wrong. I think it's CK. Anyway, however it's spelled. Also, you may have heard it as Mobitz 1. And this is the problem, is that depending on when you took your class, all the terminology changes. And this is the frustration with nursing is, you may not know the terminology second degree type one, but you know Mobitz one. So try to go, go with the current terminology instead of the different things that we hear that are uh, slang that we use. So second degree type one. So if we look at this one, the PRI varies, okay? Now, because of this longer, longer drop, can this ever be regular? No, it would never walk out regular on the QRSs. So second degree type 1 is extra P's. PRI varies. Irregular. Okay. Now if we look at a different one, wave okay so let's look at this one so when we have this one there we, go, we have P's that we can see okay and look we have an extra P so anytime we have extra P's we know that it is a block so already we throw it into the block bucket but when we look at this one, now we look at the relationship between the atrium and the ventricle. And when we do that, to the best of my drawing ability, we have a consistent PRI. So what's happening in this one is that the safety net is malfunctioning and it's only letting some of the stimulation through. So the SA node fires, hits, lets it through. SA node fires, hits, lets it through. SA node fires, hits, lets it through. This one, the SA node fired, hit, it didn't see it. It blocked the stimulation. So the QRS never fired. The ventricle never uh, pumped. And that's the problem with the blocks, is we're having problems with the blood flow. So in this particular one, we can look at this and say there are type two extra P's, the PRI is constant. So if there is a P wave with a QRS, when we measure the PRI, it's going to stay constant. This is the second rhythm that can be regular or irregular. And I'm going to show you how. With this one, is it regular? No, because if we walk these out, they would never walk out. Do you remember which other rhythm was a choice of regular and irregular? It was atrial flutter. And atrial flutter can be regular or irregular based on the conduction pattern or the conduction ratio. So with this particular one, I already know I have extra P's. There's too many P's, so I know it's a block. But when I look at the relationship, 
of the one that has QRS is my PRI is constant. This also is a conduction pattern. So this one is conducted beat, dropped beat. Conducted beat, dropped beat. Conducted beat. So if I have a pattern to my dropped beats, then when I walk out my QRSs, it will actually walk out regular. So second degree type 2, MOBITS 2, however you've heard it called, has extra Ps. The PRI is constant, but it's one of only two rhythms that can have regular or irregular listed. Okay? And then that brings us to our last one in the blocks. And this is the one that most people get wrong. And unfortunately, this is the one that is a medical emergency. It's very rare to have a third degree block and not have a patient need some help. All right. So in a third degree block, what's happening with this one is that this safety net is broken. And it's become a brick wall. Okay, so this is a brick wall. So what is the inherent rate of the SA node? It's 60 to 100. So the atrium's still just trying to do its thing. So it's firing at 60 to 100. It's just trying to pump and keep that muscle working. Now, because there's a brick wall, I'm not looking at any stimulation up from above, but remember the ventricle itself, because the heart's the only muscle that can stimulate itself to move, can actually stimulate itself. So if you watched video one, you saw that the inherent rate for the ventricle itself was 20 to 40. Remember, if the ventricle is starting to pump itself, it's just trying to buy you some time. You can't live with a heart rate of 25, but you might be able to buy you a few minutes to hopefully get to where you get to help, and that's the idea. So now the ventricle is doing its thing at 20 to 40. Okay, so what's going to happen is this one is very easy to see that you've got lots of extra P's, okay, without QRS's, so that you know it's some type of a block. With third degree block, you look for your PRI. Now with this one, the PRI's are going to vary, and they're going to vary because they have nothing to do with each other. This is just that little old woman sitting in her little chair at the house and that little old man sitting there reading the paper, but they're not talking to each other. So they're just doing their own thing and there's no relationship between them. So the PRI is going to vary. So you've got the extra P's. You've got a PRI that varies. And this one always, always, always has to be regular. And this is where you're going to get yourself into trouble. If you don't remember this rule for third degree, you will get it mixed up with one of the second degrees. Okay? So it will always march out because remember the ventricle is just doing its thing. So it will always march out. But if you were to march out here, you would see that the PRI, the P's march out as well. They're just doing its own thing. Okay? So third degree block is a little brick wall. So to recap, first degree is simply an elongated PRI. There, you actually have an underlying rhythm. So sinus rhythm with first degree block. Um, you can have a sinus tachycardia with first degree block. And so that's going to be your first degree. In your second and third degree blocks, you have extra Ps. And from there, you need to look at your PRIs and you need to look at your regularity, and that will help you get into the right block. So secondary type 1, otherwise known as Winky Bach or Mobitz 1, has extra Ps, but that has the PRIs that vary. They get longer, 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 and drop. So they can never be regular because of that changing PRI value. Type 2 has extra Ps, but the PRI stays constant, and if it has a pattern to it, you can actually have regularity. So the third degree is just a brick wall, and none of the stimulation is getting through, and they're just doing their own thing. So I hope that helps with the blocks. 
Just remember your rules on this one, and when you see extra P's, you'll know that it has to be a block. So if you want, go ahead and look for the next video. That's going to be our ventricular rhythms.